Raptor is a visual programming environment based on flowcharts. This video will introduce selection, which allows a program to determine as it runs which symbols to execute and which symbols to skip. One of the most common uses of a selection symbol is to avoid errors. For example, the radius of a circle must be positive. Inserting a selection symbol and putting the assignment and output symbols on the yes branch will ensure this is true. An output symbol with an error message is placed on the no branch. The diamond symbol in a selection must contain a comparison that is either true or false. Here we use the greater than sign to compare the value stored in radius to zero. Running the program with a positive value for radius causes the assignment and output symbols to execute because the condition in the diamond is true. Entering a negative value causes the selection symbol to follow the no branch and display the error message. Another important value to test is the boundary condition of zero. This program properly displays the error message, but such boundary conditions are easy places to make mistakes in your programs and they should always be tested. The condition in a selection symbol can be more complex than a single comparison. One common requirement is that a value must be within a specified range. The keyword AND is used to ensure the radius is both greater than 0 and less than 10. Notice the boundary value of 10 does not result in the condition being true. To do this, the equal sign is added to the comparison. As always, more details on comparison operators and logical expressions can be found in the Raptor help. Here is a Raptor graphics program that draws a target, waits for a mouse click, calculates how far the mouse click was from the center of the target, and displays a message to the user. In addition to the selection symbol, there are two other new features. First is the use of a subchart to draw the target. Subcharts are created by right-clicking on an existing tab and selecting Add Subchart. Symbols are added to a subchart in exactly the same way as the main program. Once created, subcharts are executed with a call symbol, as shown. The second new feature is the Get Mouse Button Procedure Call. This is one of the ways a user can interact with the graphics window. Get Mouse Button is a blocking procedure call, which means it will pause execution until the indicated mouse button is clicked. After the user clicks the mouse button, the variables passed as the second and third parameters will contain the coordinates of the mouse click. In this case, the variables are named x and y, but any variables could be used. The selection symbol in this program contains the formula for calculating the distance between the center of the target and the x and y coordinates of the mouse click. That result is directly compared to 20, which is the radius of the center of the target. Running the program and clicking on the center of the target shows the bullseye message. Running again and clicking outside the center shows the miss message. You may have noticed the typo in the two output symbols. The word clock should of course be click. The interesting thing here is that many of the exact same words appear in both output symbols. Errors such as these can be minimized by only typing these words once before the selection symbol and leaving only the part that is different inside the selection. Multiple selection statements can be used if there are more than two possible results. This program uses what is called a cascading selection to produce a different message for each of the five rings of the target. With this arrangement of selection symbols, each condition will be tested until one is found to be true. When a true condition is found, the yes branch is followed and the rest of the conditions are not tested. Running the program and clicking on the center shows the distance variable in the watch window is less than 20, so the bullseye message is displayed. Running again and clicking on the third ring shows the distance variable between 40 and 60, so the third condition is true and the good try message is displayed. One final note about cascading selection is that it often allows the conditions to be simplified. As each condition is tested, it is known that the previous condition has failed. This means the first part of each condition can be removed, as shown in this last version. However, doing this requires careful ordering of the selections. For example, if the bullseye and near-miss selections were reversed, the near-miss condition would be true and testing it first causes that output symbol to execute and the bullseye condition would never be tested even though it is also true. This is the end of this video. You should now be able to use basic selection symbols in your programs.